Hello and welcome back to Witches of the Moon. Thank you for watching. I'm Eva Maria, your Sunday co-host, and this week's topic is Witch Bottles. Before I get into the topic of what Witch Bottles are and how they work, I'm going to give you a little bit of a brief backtrack in terms of from where did the concept of the Witch Bottle essentially come. And next to me, off camera, I have all my thoughts kind of outlined. So if I look off camera, again, not being rude, <clears throat> excuse me, not being rude, um, just referring to the things I wrote down to keep me sort of on topic and not rambling. That said, in my understanding, in my view, um, which bottles they can essentially be um, traced back to the idea of sacred vessels. I think um, it's logical to conclude this, and let me explain how I see the evolution of witch bottles coming about. First, we begin with the concept of sacred vessels. Every ancient culture used vessels of one kind or another in their spiritual and religious practices or rites. These include pottery, boxes, bowls, bags, essentially things that contained, you know, and from the idea of utilizing sacred vessels, later emerged the concept or theme or idea of, of container magic, essentially. Container magic um, is the concept of building up or making magic within a container. It acts as a defined space and or focal point of power in which the magic can be made or developed in. It's kind of like the Wiccan idea of working within a circle, which is a defined space in which the power can be, you know, built up and concentrated um, before it is directed one way or another. And some examples of container magic include box spells, cauldron or pot work, whether, for example, whether that be um, in the Wiccan sense working with a cauldron or like in Palo Meombe when you work with the, you know, gang Nganga, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, you know, or other forms of working with a cauldron or pot or um, jar spells or bottle spells of which, which bottles are a part. Um, working with bowls, mojo bags, or spell bags, etc. These are all forms of container magic that developed out of the essential practice of working with sacred vessels. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, witch bottles, that name, witch bottles, they are essentially a kind of protective container magic. Usually they're done for a place, but they can also be done for specific people, either the self or others, or both. Um, which bottles can be offensive, which is sort of an attacking or... or outwardly aggressive protective um, method, or they can be defensive, which would be more of a warding, deflecting, shielding method. And then you have also two other kinds within, you know, the category of witch bottles, whether they be offensive or defensive. You have um, traditional witch bottles, and then you have contemporary witch bottles. Now, traditional witch bottles, they, as far as I am aware, are offensive in nature. Um, they're the kinds of witch bottles that you hear about that utilize, like, sharp things and pee. Um, and then there's contemporary witch bottles, 
which can be either offensive or defensive or a little bit of both. Um, they're, the contemporary witch bottles are a little more like spell bottles, and these are tailor-made using various protective ingredients, um, and, and they're conceived of by the person creating the bottle. It's intended to be a witch bottle, but for whatever reason that person prefers not to work the traditional kind of witch bottle. Maybe they don't like the idea of working with pee, or maybe they just would rather not um, necessarily be handling sharp objects, whatever the reason happens to be, or maybe they just like, maybe it resonates with them more, the idea of kind of tailor-making their witch bottle their way, kind of following their, their spirit-led um, sort of inner uh, knowing, they're sort of following their intuition, letting themselves be spirit-led in the creation of their witch bottles, and that's fine too. Um, okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how exactly witch bottles are supposed to work. A witch bottle, okay, now I mentioned how you're building up the power in the bottle, you're creating the confined, defined, empowered work within the space of the bottle. Offensive witch bottles, they um, aggressively um, fight negativity that could come your way or that would come your way, they will aggressively fight, attack those. Um, they're not like cursing, they just, it's kind of like having a really vicious dog watching your house, you know what I mean? Contemporary witch bottles that can be either offensive or defensive or a little bit of both, they can either act again like that really vicious dog guarding your house or they can be like a really strong shield or they can be a little bit of both, you know, and that's that's fine, however you happen to tailor it, or depending on which method you happen to go with. So that's sort of the idea of how they work, um, and I'll get a little more into, you know, the specifics now as I'm going to start talking about each kind of bottle. Um, whether or not you do a traditional or contemporary witch bottle, I recommend working with a glass bottle. The reason why I say glass is because plastic, um, plastics sometimes will break down or, or degrade and you kind of don't want that happening, especially being that you're going to use something either like pee or like alcohol or some other strong things in the bottle. You don't want these to over time kind of like degrade the bottle and then one day the bottle happens to for whatever reason, um, its integrity is compromised and it should like leak or something. You don't want them to risk that. Um, I don't know how long that would take. I don't, you know, but I just feel that personally glass, I think, is a better way to go. Also glass is, in my view, more natural. Not that plastic or, or man-made things can't work, you know, but I just feel that glass, I think, is, is a probably a better way to go. Um, also, you may want to select a bottle that is specifically designed for keeping liquid. Um, this is because if you're going to be burying your witch bottle, or let's say if it falls over for whatever reason in the space that you're keeping it in, and I'll get to that in a minute, you don't want the liquid inside to be leaking out, pouring out, whatever, especially if you do a traditional witch bottle and you're utilizing urine. You don't want urine all over, let's say, if you hid it in your closet. Um, and if it's outside, you don't want the contents to run out of the bottle because then the bottle's kind of compromised and it's not going to do its job as it was intended. Um, that said, in a traditional witch bottle, I'm going to speak about what goes into that and, and why. Um, the first thing in a traditional witch bottle are sharp items. The sharp items are the aggressive, offensive, attacking implements. Um, usually these can be, and this isn't necessarily the only kinds of sharp items you can use, but these are like, you know, generally what are used. Um, shards of broken glass or shards of broken mirror. Um, you can use pins, 
needles, tacks, nails, um, as in like, you know, carpentry nails, those, you know, they can be new, but a lot of people will use broken, bent, you know, kind of nails. Um, razor blades, sharp pieces of broken pottery, anything really that's sharp. And the sharpness, again, it's sort of like an offensive, like attacking, sort of like stay away evil because I'm going to mess you up kind of concept. Um, and then the next thing that would go into the bottle once it's full of these sharp implements would then be urine. Ideally, whoever the bottle is for, that's whose urine should go into the bottle. Um, women, if they want to empower their bottle, um, if they want to, you know, especially link it to themselves and tailor make it for themselves, they can make their witch bottle using their urine at the time of their menstrual cycle because then their own blood would also go into the bottle. But I will say that in my view, I think that's okay for the self, but if you're making a bottle for someone else, um, if that person can't pee into that bottle, unless they are like your kids, your parents, your siblings, I don't think you should do the version, uh, this bottle, where you would pee during your menstrual cycle if you're a woman, um, because if they're not your relative, you don't know what the future brings. You may or may not want to link yourself because it's possible that that blood can also create a link between you and that person. So the only time I would say I guess it's okay is if it's like your kids you're making the bottle for or your parents or your siblings because they're always going to be your kids, your parents, your siblings, whatever. Like a relative, that's fine. But if it's going to be someone who's not related to you, I would just suggest maybe thinking about that just in case I can't guarantee the blood would definitely link you, but um, it's a possibility. You want to consider that possibility. Um, so there's that. What else do I want to say? Oh, and uh, speaking of making a bottle for someone else, I have found, I have learned in my own experience that if you want to make a witch bottle in the traditional way and you want to make it, or even in the contemporary way, and you want to make it for someone else other than yourself, um, and again, uh, like I said, it's better if they, if their pee goes into the bottle because that's like sort of a link to the self, you know, for the bottle. But if you can't have them pee in the bottle, let's say you're making it on their behalf, maybe they need protection badly. Um, but either they're not, let's say they're uh, in another state, in another country, or let's say, um, maybe it's someone you care about but you um, maybe feel awkward asking them to pee in a bottle because maybe they don't quite have the same views as you or maybe you just, for whatever reason, you just can't get them to pee in the bottle because of whatever reason. Um, well, you can use your urine, but I have learned and, and found that if you put some personal concern of theirs or maybe... Um, you know, you could put a picture of them inside the bottle. That will make the bottle for them. And also, I think while you're making the bottle, you should have the intention, if you're making it for someone else, or even if you're making it for yourself, have the intention in mind and in, in your feeling and your emotion. Um, really have that intention set that this bottle is made to protect either yourself or if it's for someone else, this bottle is made to protect so-and-so. And when you put their picture in, really take a moment to look at that picture or put that personal concern, you know, whatever you're looking at, whatever you're going to put in there, look at that for a minute and just remind yourself, feel and know and think to yourself, this bottle, as I put this picture in, this bottle is going to protect this person. So you would, yeah, so you do your sharp items for a traditional bottle you would pee in the bottle. If you're a woman, you can pee in the bottle during your menstrual cycle to empower it or to make it really strong for yourself, um, or, or even if you're doing it for someone else. But I would advise that if it's for someone else, if they are not a relative, um, I would, you know, a blood relative, someone who's definitely never going to leave your life because they're your kids, your brother, your sister, your mother, whatever, like someone who's always going to be bonded to you in that way. If it's somebody else, I would think about, I would think about it before peeing in there with your blood. Um, but, 
Yeah, and then if you want to tailor it to someone else, you can put their personal concern or picture inside the bottle. And then what you would do with this bottle is then you would seal it up. And this is and, and this is assuming too that you're making the bottle for a person. If it's a bottle for a place, you can just make the bottle using you know no personal concerns of anyone else, just using the sharp implements, your own urine, you know, and then putting the intention into it that it's to guard a place, and then you would bury the bottle somewhere where it will not be unearthed on the property of that place, or you can hide the bottle in a place where it will not be disturbed. And the intention should be that it is like to protect that that space, to to defend, you know, that place. Um, but again, it can also be for the place and the people inhabiting it. You know, and like let's say it's for you and your family. Well, you know, it can and your house. Well, you can obviously make it with the intention it'll protect your home, it'll protect you and everyone in the home. You can use your own urine. And you can put little photographs or, or a little concern of each other person that you also want it to protect. So it's kind of like for all of you. Um, and then you would, again, you would bury it on your property, either somewhere where it um, will not be unearthed. You can either bury it or you can hide it in a place, maybe the attic or the basement or a closet where like other people in the family will not disturb it. You can even tell them like, leave this alone. You know, if you come upon this, do not mess with it. As long as that bottle is undisturbed um, in the sense that it is not broken, it is not opened, it is not, like, you know, messed with. It's As long as it remains intact, as long as it, um, you know, stays where you put it, then the magic will continue to work. Should your bottle break for whatever reason, just make another one. Um, just clean it up and make another one. I like the idea of burying them personally because I feel um, when you hide the bottle, there's just room there for, you know, accidents to happen, for it to be accidentally knocked over when you're, let's say, going through your things. You forget it's in the side of the closet and you kick it over or you push it over by mistake and it breaks. Or, you know, someone comes upon it, forgets, you know, or doesn't know, let's say if you didn't tell someone, you know, if you didn't tell everyone else in the house, don't mess with this, they find it, you know, whatever, something can happen, you know. So I like the idea of burying it in a place. It should be on the property, though, where you live, if, whether it's for you or whether it's for your home or for you and your home. It should really be near you, I think, um, mainly because it just like you would carry a talisman or an item to kind of work for you, um, you kind of want it near. And also, if you bury it somewhere else, you can't guarantee it's not going to be unearthed. You know what I mean? You can't guarantee, like, if one day all of a sudden a project is going to be, you know, started, they're going to build a house on that property in that barren lot where you buried it, and all of a sudden, hey, it gets dug up and broken. You know, you can't really you know, guarantee that. So it, unless it's like, you know, on your own property where you know, you know that space isn't disturbed, you know. I think it's just better to have the bottle near, have the bottle on the property, have the bottle near to you, near to your home. Anyway, sorry, I went off topic and I didn't mean to do that. Let me um, just speak a little bit about contemporary witch bottles and then I'll probably be wrapping this video up. Contemporary witch bottles, as I said before, they're kind of more spirit-led, tailor-made um, by the person making them. And contemporary witch bottles, they're a little more like spell bottles in that you can sort of use your creativity, draw on whatever knowledge you happen to have. It's kind of like the sky's the limit, um, what you use in there. You can do one that's liquid-based, or you can do like a dry witch bottle in a contemporary sense. Um, if you don't want to use pee and you want to do a liquid bottle, I think probably the best thing to use in place of pee, if you don't want to be messing with pee, is use alcohol. The stronger the proof, the better. Um, you can use something like Everclear, or you can use like vodka or like whiskey or like, you know, some kind of alcohol. Or you can even use like rubbing alcohol and like a 90-something percent proof, you know. Um, 
and and then into that you can you can put various things whether you want to use some sharp things whether you want to put some talismans in there whether you want to put herbs in there whatever you want to put in there like I said the sky is the limit um, the reason why I recommend alcohol is because to a lot of lesser spirits or even a lot of spirits in general alcohol appears as fire on the astral plane if you're putting into that alcohol the intention of protection um, and keeping vibrations, you know, um, more positive, like sort of keeping them clean and positive and, and protective, that alcohol then becomes a fiery um, protective agent in an astral sense. So, um, what else did I write there? Oh, and by the way, the stronger the proof, the reason why I said the stronger the proof is so that, um, it doesn't, the, the liquid in the bottle doesn't turn, you know, over time. You don't want it to get all moldy and weird. So you don't want to choose like a 50% alcohol. Um, you want to use a stronger alcohol, like a 90 something or higher proof, or maybe an 80 proof alcohol, something really, really strong. Um, and like I said, you can do a dry witch bottle where you utilize just like things like salt, herbs, you know, um, you can put items in there such as talismans or amulets or, you know, little written petitions or uh, anything really that is protective in nature. And you can consider um, whether or not you want the bottle to be more offensive, like a sort of a, you know, fighting sort of negativity concept. Like, do you want to use sharp objects? Do you want to use aggressive objects? Or do you want to use more shielding objects and that's really going to be more personal and up to you or you can use a little bit of both but I think um, whether you do a traditional or contemporary bottle is really a matter of personal choice I don't think one works better than the other I will say that the traditional bottle is cheaper and probably easier to make because you can get a bottle just about anywhere. You can wash out a bottle from some food that you had in your house. You can wash a glass bottle, you know, whatever. Um, that's pretty much free. Your pee is free. <laughs> Sharp, broken things, they're not hard to find and you're not really going to be spending money on that. A picture, that's like pennies, you know what I mean? It really doesn't cost much to get a picture or even like a little personal concern, like if you're making it for someone to protect somebody else, so take a hair from their hairbrush, you know, I mean, how much does that cost? Nothing. So the traditional bottle, it's cheap and it's easy. The contemporary bottle, on the other hand, you're going to be getting really creative. It's not to say it can't be low price or cheap to make, but because you're going to be probably utilizing more um, ingredients and getting more creative, you probably have to go out and buy some things, you know, not necessarily, but it's likely. So there's that to consider as well, you know, where where are you in terms of financial limitation? Um, again, as I said before, either, either of these types of bottles are equally effective. It's really just what do you feel, what way do you feel you want to go? And um, yeah, when you make these bottles, they both, either of them, both of them would be either buried in a place that will not be disturbed or kept hidden you know, as long as the bottle's not broken, as long as the liquid or items inside are not dumped out or, or uh, you know, as long as they don't run out, leak out, whatever, you're fine. One final note I'd like to make before wrapping up this video um, is that I'm going to be linking some videos and articles in the description box with some more information for you on the topic of witch bottles, so do be sure to check those out. So this is... Um, kind of all I have to say on this topic of witch bottles. I hope I've given you some good insights, some good information. I've tried my best to do right by you all. Let's hope that I succeed. Um, other than that, feel free to um, hit me up in the comment box if you have thoughts, feelings, questions, anything. I will try to address those as well as I can. And until next time, have a great Sunday. Blessed be and ashe.